Okay, we're going to take a look at um, how to derive inverse trig functions and the relationship between a function that's differentiable and a function that's continuous. There's a connection there that's very important um, as you prepare for the AP exam. So, but first of all, let's review some functions um, uh, like here. And for the, this first problem is to sketch a function that's not continuous and not differentiable at x equals c. So I'd like you to pause the video right now. Try to come up with that function, and then when you think you got it, hit play and see if you get something close to what I come up with. So a function that's not continuous and not differentiable at x equals c. Um, not continuous means you have a whole or asymptote or maybe a step jump, a step discontinuity. And not differentiable means it can have any one of those things. So I'm going to draw a function that actually has a hole at x equals c. Okay, and so that would be a function that's not continuous, nor is it differentiable. Um, like I mentioned, another example might be a function that has an asymptote at x equals c. It might look something like that. Okay, and that would be a function that's not continuous and not differentiable. So now I'm going to ask you to graph a function that's not differentiable, but continuous at x equals c. And then I want you to graph one that's continuous and differentiable at x equals c. So again, I want to encourage you to pause the video, try this out, and then come back to the video and check to see what your answers are. Okay, so for continuous that's not differentiable but continuous, um, the only way that's going to happen is via a cusp. So I'm going to put x equals c and draw some sort of cusp there. Okay, I'll put c over there. Okay, and so that's a function that's not differentiable but it's continuous. And remember, this is not differentiable because it has an infinite amount of tangent lines. I can draw many, many different tangent lines there, and I don't know which one is, it is. That's why it's not differentiable. Okay, for h of x, continuous and differentiable at x equals c, well, that's just about any function that you've been um, experienced before you got to calculus. I'm going to draw a cubic function, and this is a function that is both continuous and differentiable. Remember, we were playing around with the other day is that as long as a function becomes a line, it's differentiable. In other words, when you zoom in on it and it becomes a line, it's differentiable. This point would become a line if you zoomed in enough. So it's continuous and differentiable. Okay, so now I'd like you to try to draw a function that's differentiable but not continuous at x equals c. And once again, I'm going to pause the gra uh, ask you to pause, try to graph this, and then come back to the video. Well, sorry, uh, I hope, hope you had difficulty with this problem because this is not possible. As soon as a function is differentiable, meaning I can zoom in on it and it becomes a line, it automatically has to be continuous. So this is a trick question. This cannot be done. And this illustrates the relationship between differentiability and continuity. Differentiability implies continuity, meaning that if you have a function that's differentiable, automatically you can assume the function is continuous. There's no other way. So I'm sorry, that was a trick question. Okay, so now here's a different type of problem. It says, how can you find the derivative with respect to x, dy dx, of the equation sine of y equals x? If you notice here, this equation has sine of y, not sine of x. So because we want to derive this with respect to x, we want to um, use a chain rule. Chain rules, all right? We've got to think of this as an outside function, namely sine, and an inside function, whatever y turns out to be, okay? So I'm going to derive this with the chain rule. So the left side becomes cosine y times the derivative of the inside. I'm going to call y prime. The derivative of the right-hand side is equal to 1. So now if I solve for y prime, I can divide both sides by cosine y and realize that the derivative is 1 over cosine y. The problem is, this isn't an equation that's in terms of x. If you notice, the equation is terms of y. But I really want something in terms of x because of the dy dx notation. It says I want something in terms of x. I'm going, well, I'm not sure how to do this. So I'm going to go back to the original problem and say, oh, let's do a little trig here. Right, we'll think back to trig last year. And sine of y equals x. I know that has to do with right triangles. So I'm going to draw a little right triangle. I'm going to label one side y. Sine, you remember, from Sokotoa, is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of y equals x, that's not really a fraction, but I can think of that as x over 1, and say, okay, opposite is x, hypotenuse is 1. Let's put the 1 over there. 
Okay, so I know two of the three sides. I can find the third side by using the Pythagorean theorem. Remember, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, now we have x squared plus what I'm looking for squared equals 1 squared. And so I can subtract 1 minus x squared and then square root that, and that will give me what the um, adjacent side is. And now I can use that to replace by using the ka part of adjacent of Sokotoa and realize that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So I can come back here and replace the cosine of y with the cosine of this same triangle, which would be the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, which means the derivative here would be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And now I have this equation in terms of x. And so there's my derivative. Okay, so if we use the results of the previous problem, we might have a chance of solving this problem now, which, given that y equals the inverse cosine of x, what does y prime equal? Well, remember, uh, inverse cosine is a function that... Normally, cosine, sine, cosine, and tangent functions are functions that, if you're given the angle, you can find the ratio. Hence the terminology Sokotoa. If you know what the angle is, you can find opposite of hypotenuse or adjacent of hypotenuse. However, there are times when you, it's the other way around, when if you are given the ratio, can you find the angle that's associated with that ratio? Okay? So the inverse cosine would actually find the angle whose ratio is whatever is given to you. So that's what inverse cosine. Please note that this is not an exponent, this is a symbol. That means inverse. So this is one of those exceptions. Usually you see a number up there. It's an exponent. But when it's a negative one, it is assumed that this is a symbol. So this is a function. And you can actually find this button on your calculator. Okay, so y equals inverse cosine of x. Well, if you look at this function, you realize, well, this is not something that we're real familiar with. So what I want to do here is kind of change this to an equation that I'm a little bit more familiar with by taking the cosine of both sides. If I take the cosine of the left side, I get cosine of y. If I take the cosine of the right side, that'll cancel out that inverse cosine, kind of undoes it, and so I just get x. And I'm going to try to derive this, and this is how it was related to the previous problem. So remember, i got to derive the left side, but i got to um, follow the chain rule, because y is a function. So the derivative of cosine, the outside function, is negative sine of y times the derivative of the inside, which we're going to record as y prime, equals the derivative of x, which is 1. And then if I want to get the y prime by itself, I divide both sides by negative sine of y. So I get 1 over negative sine of y. But remember, I want to find an equation that has an x in it, not a y. And I realize, no, oh, this isn't, I mean, it's an equation, but it's not the most useful equation. So I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to take this and think back to trig. And let's see if we make a right triangle out of this. So Sokotoa, hmm, cosine is ka, right? So adjacent over hypotenuse. So I look here and say, oh yeah, x over 1. So assuming that this is y, x would be my adjacent, 1 would be my hypotenuse. So I can do the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or in this case, c squared minus a squared gives me b squared. And realize that this side has to be 1 minus x squared, the square root of that. So that gives me the opposite. So now I can come back down to this, my answer here, and say, well, I can get an expression for sine of y in terms of x if I use so from Sokotoa. So that will help me get this expression in terms of x. So I'm going to look here and say, well, it's a 1 over negative something. So I think sine of y. So let's look at this triangle. Sine is opposite of hypotenuse. So opposite of y is that square root function over the hypotenuse is 1. So it's the negative, the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, but I'm not going to write 1. And this turns out to be y prime, or the derivative of the inverse cosine function. And so this is something that's been emphasized the last couple years in the AP exam, is being able to find the derivative of an inverse function. Um, this happens to be an inverse trig function, and we'll look at other kinds of inverse functions later on. But for right now, I want to make sure that you can understand a process that will get you the inverse trig functions.